Welcome to NOAA Central Library's educational platform for the presentation of research and ideas in support of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration's mission. Today's library seminar is titled Developing an Expert System to Construct an Ensemble of Models for Fishery Stock Assessment. The presentation is part of the National Stock Assessment Science Seminar Series, which is developed by NOAA Fisheries and organized by Kristen Blackheart. Today's speaker, Mark Bounder, will be introduced by Kristen. Before I hand over the mic, um, here are just a few housekeeping items for your consideration. If you have trouble with the audio or visual components of GoToWebinar, we suggest that you log out and rejoin us. This resets the software and usually resolves most technical issues. Our presentation is being recorded and will, be and will be available on the NOAA Central Library YouTube channel later today. I'll add the link to our channel uh, to the chat box within this uh, webinar. We're very interested in your questions and we encourage you to ask them throughout the seminar, even though the speaker will not address them until the end of his presentation. All audience members are muted, so type your questions or comments in the chat box under questions located in the control panel of GoToWebinar. And to our live audience participants, we encourage you to fill out the quick survey at the end of this webinar. The library wants to know what you'd like to tune into in the future. So with that last detail, let's get started. The mic is yours, Mike Kristen. Thanks, Lisa. And um, thank you so much to Mark for being with us today to present his um, thoughts and research. Uh, Dark, Dr. Mark Maunder is the head of the Stock Assessment Program at the Inter-American Tropical Tuna Commission and a co-founder of the Center for the Advancement of Population Assessment Methodology, or CAPM. Mark's research focuses on developing and advancing methods for fishery stock assessment. Some of his contributions have included work to make ADMB free and open source, development of an age-structured statistical catch at length stock assessment model for tunas, and development of the general Bayesian stock assessment model Colerain. He's also been a driving force behind the use of integrated stock assessment models and pioneered the integration of tagging data into stock assessment models. Also, if you've never seen it, Mark does a hauntingly accurate impression of vintage Andre Punt. Um, so with that, I'll hand it over to Mark. And once again, thanks for being here today. Well, thanks. And thanks everyone for uh, coming to my uh, presentation today. And as um, was introduced, I'm gonna be talking about developing an expert system to construct that ensemble model uh, for fishery stock assessment. So first of all, I'm going to give you a motivating example. And this actually came up last month in the seminar series when Liz Brooks gave her presentation on the same topic. And it's the uh, stock assessment of the guy tuna in the Eastern Pacific Ocean. And as was mentioned last um, month, there was an issue there with doing the ensemble modeling because it came up with a uh, multimodal distribution for the management quantities of interest, as you can see in the figure here, with the different models creating that multimodality. The assessments with the, uh, the issues with the assessment itself um, included a regime shift in recruitment, which was thought to be an artifact of the, the model assumptions, and also sensitivity to the addition of new data. And there was multiple models that would um, improve these uh, issues. Um, and when we had a, an external review of the assessment, the external uh, review recommended that we do some kind of risk analysis uh, using an ensemble of models. Um, but one of the big issues we had with doing that is because of not being able to um, correctly uh, Get the, uh, get the data weighting correct. And also because uh, all the models tended to be somewhat misspecified, we couldn't really use the fit to the data to uh, weight the models in the ensemble. So we came up with a subjective scoring um, process based on the diagnostics, and that was used to weight the models. And despite this being actually quite popular with, with people, I wasn't really happy with it. And the reason for that is because one would expect that your model, if it was correctly specified, should pass all the diagnostics. So that's what made it motivated me to, to come up with the um, idea of, of looking more at an expert system to doing um, creating ensembles and particularly looking at uh, how we use the diagnostics. 
So here's the uh, typical approach we use uh, for stock assessment, where the assessment author comes up with a set of assumptions uh, for the model that they think represents the stock, um, and then they create an assessment around that. And then once the assessment has been run, um, we'll often look at diagnostics, and um, if it fails those diagnostics, we modify a few assumptions, run the assessment again, look at the diagnostics. We might do that a couple of times until we're you know, satisfied that the diagnostics are good enough or as good as we can get them. And then we come up with a uh, base model, and then we use that for management advice. Um, often we'll do sensitivity analyses to see how different model assumptions um, affect the results. But it's not that often that those sensitivity analyses are actually included in the final management advice. So the issues we have with this uh, current approach is that often the choice of the base case model is subjective, you know, based on the assessment author's uh, previous experiences and, and areas of research. The uh, base case often doesn't adequately satisfy uh, all of the diagnostics, suggesting that there might be something wrong with it. Um, and the data is often not informative enough to differentiate among uh, several assumptions. And finally, um, a single base case model doesn't resent all the uncertainty because it's not uh, taking into consideration the uh, model structure uncertainty and, and some of the assumptions that are being made. So the solution to this is to come up with a, some automated objective approach um, using an ensemble of models that satisfies the diagnostics. And this was what leads us to uh, thinking about using a expert system. So expert systems were all the rage back in the 1980s um, and the early 1990s, and this is when I was starting to get into stock assessment. Um, and I took a course on expert systems, and so that's why it's always been in the back of my mind about using this for doing assessments. And so this here was taken from Wikipedia, and essentially an expert system is, is like a computer system that emulates the decision-making ability of a human expert. And it does this to solve complex problems by reasoning through bodies of knowledge uh, re represented mainly by uh, if-then rules. So the task in developing an expert system, particularly for stock assessment, is to develop and collate the body of knowledge and then turn that into a set of rules that can be automated using some computer task. So here's my um, concept of what an expert system would look like for fishery stock assessment. And first of all, you have a, a set of default, default assumptions that you would um, come up with that would provide a, a fairly decent stock assessment. Uh, there might be multiple sets of those assumptions um, because of some of the uncertainty of, in our understanding. Then we'll run the assessment um, and then look at the diagnostics and um, you, typically when you first do it, the diagnostics will fail. So we'll um, look at some alternative assumptions to solve those diagnostics. And there might be multiple alternative assumptions that we consider uh, are appropriate. And then we'll run assessments on those, do the diagnostics again. Um, again, some of those may fail and we'll um, reevaluate our assumptions and see if we can improve things. Some of them may, may fail and we don't really know how to improve them, so we will discard those models. And for those that are passed the diagnostics, then we put them into our uh, model ensemble, um, and we will use that for management advice. So here are the, the four main components of the expert system, and I'm going to use this to structure the rest of my presentation. And so the first is creating a good practices guide for the default assumptions. I then create a general model for the assessment that's able to uh, incorporate all the different uh, assumptions that we might make for different uh, stocks. And third, we create a diagnostic algorithm to fix the model so we can make sure that the models we're using are, are not unspecified. And then uh, finally, we need a way to uh, produce the weights and then combine the models in the ensemble. So the goals of the system basically a twofold. One is to include all reasonable models that are consistent with the knowledge and the data. And then the second goal is to combine the results from the models by weighting them by their reliability. So we want to ask ourselves, 
what does uh, reasonable and reliable mean? So what does reasonable mean? Well, first of all, the model has to be consistent with theory, knowledge and experience. So this is where the good practices guide comes in. So it tells us what type of models we should be using or trying. It should pass all the diagnostics and this is essentially minimizing model misspecification and possible bias. Also, we don't want models that are over-parameterized to make sure that they're useful. If there's too much variability, then, then any kind of management advice will be uncertain and not, not useful. So we want to avoid ex, uh, excessive variance. And we can do this either by using um, model uh, selection tools like AIC or doing um, prediction skill. How reliable is the, is the model? Well, it, there's actually some um, correspondence between a model being reasonable and reliable. And so uh, a reliable model wants to be able, should pass all the diagnostics. And also we should be able to measure it by the fit to the data um, using AIC and, and, and other uh, selection criteria. That's assuming if we can get the data weighting correct. Um, or by uh, prediction score. So there's a bit of overlap between uh, the measurements for reasonable and reliable. Okay, so now let's get on to the first component um, of the expert system, and that's the, the good practices guide to um, determine the default assumptions we might be using in our assessments. And so, um, in the default assumptions, they're going to be um, determined based on a number of factors, including the data that's available, the biological characteristics of the stock, the fisheries characteristics, uh, any major uncertainties in our understanding about the system, and also possibly the management objectives, because different models uh, may actually perform better or provide advice on different management objectives. Also, as I mentioned before, um, there might be multiple sets of default assumptions that we want to look at um, because our knowledge is not uh, complete. So, um, you know, CAPM um, has been um, focusing mainly on developing these good practices um, and it's been doing it through a number of different uh, ways. It started off um, look, with uh, postdocs and students and visiting scientists, um, but due to the inability to get funding, um, we really focused on the workshop series and the, the special issues. And so uh, the Kaplan workshops, even though Kaplan's only been around for 10 years, the workshops themselves actually been going over uh, 20 years. Um, and they started back in 2002 as a, uh, an annual uh, October stock assessment workshop series at the IATTC. Um, and then the first one was actually based on diagnostics, which uh, Shelton Harley and myself uh, initiated back in 2002. Since then, we've um, got some funding and so we've been able to um, have uh, uh, larger uh, workshops and so we've covered all the different uh, aspects of fishery stock assessment all the way from selectivity uh, through to spatial temporal modeling um, and we um, basically finished up this year with the final one on natural mortality and next year there's going to be one on good practices to basically summarize all the information we we've understood uh, over this process so why uh, were those workshops a success? Uh, first of all, because we got funding and through the CAPM process, we were able to uh, pay for keynotes to come in. And once you get uh, experts in the field coming to the workshops, then you get more interest from other people to attend. We also um, provided ample time for discussions. And to promote discussions, we used uh, focus questions and had a, a, a subject expert chair. Um, we also spent quite a bit of time motivating people to do research for the um, workshops. And finally, the, um, all this research was recorded by having a special issues for each of those workshops in the journal uh, Fisheries Science. And I just wanted to highlight again that next year in um, October, November, we'll be having the uh, um, workshop on good practices uh, in Rome. So uh, we've still got a year away, so there's good time for people to do research and uh, present at that workshop. 
So what are the, the next steps in the developing these default assumptions? Well, somebody needs to, to write the guide and then basically the information from that guide needs to be taken and automated uh, into a user interface uh, for uh, the assessment models that are going to be used. So the next component I'm going to talk about is the uh, general model for doing the assessments. And this is a model that needs to be able to implement all the different uh, possible assumptions that uh, we might want in our stock assessment. And so um, there's lots of different types of data that can be used, so it's got to be able to use those. Um, we also want uh, all the different options that we might need for uh, doing our stock assessments. Uh, we need some controls. Um, to implement those options for a particular uh, application. We need some kind of estimation process, and then we also need the desired output. Um, one of the big considerations here in the developing the, uh, the general assessment is what type of uh, model are we going to use? And I wanted to expand on that a little bit. And what I'm uh, recommending is, is the standard age or length or um, structured integrated analysis because they can use lots of different types of data and, and, and have lots of different uh, options and um, different characteristics represented. There's also lots of other types of models that have been used and, and could be used. For example, surplus production models. Um, however, we can approximate a, a surplus production model using an age structured model with fixed parameters. And then we could estimate productivity parameters like steepness or natural mortality or some kind of combination to, to actually uh, represent what you might want to represent with a surplus production model. There's also a lot of different data bore type methods. And again here, we can replicate most of these or a lot of them in uh, an A-structured integrated model. And the reason we should be doing this is because it makes the uh, assumptions more transparent. We can also better represent the uncertainty because we can estimate uh, more parameters. And also it can easily be extended and we can add additional information to uh, improve that assessment. Another set of models that should be considered are multi-species and ecosystem models. Um, it's fairly easy to uh, input an index of predators and prey into a, a single species uh, integrated analysis. But it's not clear if that's going to be um, adequate enough to uh, represent the types of interactions that might be important uh, for management advice. So there's models of uh, intermediate complexity that, that might be useful. Um, personally, I'm still undecided on, on how far down this line we should go because this makes the, uh, the modeling um, a lot more complex. Um, so it's still something that I'm uh, thinking about. And then finally, the reason we should use a, a single type of model um, that allows uh, the representation of, of a wide range of other models is because it makes uh, comparisons um, between among models uh, more consistent. And this facilitates the uh, weighting and combining of models in an ensemble. Um, one alternative might be the use of the NOAA Fishery Integrated Toolbox, which facilitates the use of multiple model types and also translates among those models. So something else that, that uh, should be considered when developing the expert system. Um, so in, back in 2019, CAPM had a workshop and created a special issue um, on uh, frameworks for the next generation uh, general stock assessment models. And this was held in, uh, in New Zealand um, in collaboration with uh, NIWA. And one of those, uh, the main papers in the special issue was from uh, Andre. And um, this is a table from that, which basically uh, looked at what features should be in the next generation model. And so this table uh, lists across the top here, um, some of the main general stock assessment models that are used, and then some features uh, down the right hand side here, uh, sorry, left hand side here. Um, and I just wanted to highlight a few of these. And so, as you can see, there's only one of these models that explicitly has both age and length dynamics, and that's Gadget. And there's also only one that actually has a state space formulation, which is uh, non Bayesian. Um, most of the models have spatial stru structure, but only three of them actually have the ability to have multiple stocks. 
And there's only two that actually have uh, multi-species relationships or explicitly multi-species. Here's a similar table, but this comes from the uh, workshop report. And um, the things to note here are that we've actually got uh, even more general models that have been used or in development. And also here we've got information about whether or not those models include tagging data. And so you can see here that uh, four of them actually do allow for tagging data. But really, when you really get into it, um, the tagging modules are generally not fully um, developed in the sense that they don't necessarily have all the characteristics and options you might want to do for a, a, a rigorous uh, tagging analysis. So it's useful to look at how these different types of models are used. And here I'm looking at those used by NIMPS in the US. And you can see here that over half of them are actually um, using integrated analyses. Um, but there is still quite a lot that use biomass dynamics models and also data limited models. So there is some scope for, for um, including even more assessments into uh, some form of uh, general integrated analysis. Now looking at the actual types of uh, software and models that are being used, um, you can see there's quite a range here. Um, and these are for integrated assessments. The two things to note is that um, a majority, or a lot of them are used, um, um, are conducted by using stock synthesis, which is not surprising given it's, it's um, one of the more highly developed models and has a lot of um, support, uh, such as um, user interfaces and output um, reporting systems. Um, the other thing to note is that there's still quite a lot of custom models. And, and a lot of these other packages as well. So there's a lot of scope here for including uh, these assessments into uh, uh, an integrated model or a common integrated model. And stock synthesis is not just used in the US, it's also used all over the world. Um, so you can see that this tells you that there is um, a lot of desire to use these uh, generalized integrated models and, and a lot of people are taking them up and because it it's facilitates the assessments and also reviews and research and everything else so it's it's quite uh, convenient and useful uh, to use in integrated analysis however there's a lot of uh, limitations on these models and um, there's really no current model uh, or one model that's in development that has all the needed features. So there's a lot of scope to, to improve these uh, uh, generalized models. There's also a lot of wasteful duplication because there's so many models being developed. And really, as long as you um, make the same assumptions, you get the same results. It doesn't matter which software platform you're using, it's really the assumptions you're making about your assessment, not the software itself. Um, the main packages, or most of them, uh, are quite old now, and so are the uh, developers, and so uh, the lifespan of these, these models may not be that great. Um, and most of them were also built using, um, not using, um, you know, modern computing principles, and uh, this impedes their, their evolution. So the good thing is that um, NOLR is, is embarked on a, a, a very, um, comprehensive set of uh, basically integrated modeling system. And the reason that this is important for this particular talk is, talk is that one of the main focuses is uh, developing the next generation uh, stock assessment model. And so um, this is, this is a, a really a good um, program that has been developed and it's going to uh, address a lot of uh, issues that we have with the current general models. So the next steps in terms of the assessment are to finish up the next generation model, which obviously is going to take a lot of work and funding and um, time, although we're fortunate that uh, NOAA has is, is, is stepped up and, and doing that. The other thing I wanna really highlight here is that the next generation model should make sure that it has close kin mark recapture integrated. And the reason for this is the main, one of the main um, tasks of a stock assessment is estimate absolute abundance. And also natural mortality is, a, is a, a very influential parameter and we don't often have lots of information about that. 
and close kin mark recapture can estimate both absolute abundance and natural mortality and it doesn't have a lot of the issues with traditional uh, tagging data uh, so i'd highly recommend that that be considered in any uh, next generation model so the next component is um, the diagnostic alg algorithm and this is where i really think that uh, the expert system uh, idea um, comes into play in, into doing stock assessments and so for diagnostics um, you know there's lots of different types of diagnostics so we've got to um, apply multiple diagnostics and the ones that uh, make most sense or are most useful we also need some pass fail rules for each of those diagnostics so we know whether or not a model has satisfied the diagnostics or not but not only that if a model fails we want that diagnostic to be able to suggest to us what corrections should be made to overcome the issues with the diagnostics and maybe correct the model the specification. So I think of this um, as really the whole uh, package here, including the diagnostics, the assumptions that need to be made and the assessment itself. And this here is really on, where I'm focusing on the expert system part of this. So a decision tree is basically an expert system. And here's an example that uh, we've taken from uh, the risk analysis that I men mentioned at the start of the presentation. And basically it's taking the virgin recruitment likelihood component um, profile and the age structured production model diagnostic and trying to interpret those together um, to come up with, in this case, uh, weights that we would use in the risk analysis. But it also could be used to uh, determine whether or not um, a model passes the diagnostics and if it didn't pass what possible corrections could be uh, implemented and so as as you know that as you go down the tree you ask questions and it gets you to a, a final solution which would be a pass fail and a, a recommendation on what to try to improve the uh, assessment so Regression trees are a great way to develop these rules because they're essentially representing a decision tree. And here's an example that we've done before. It's not the same uh, situation, but it gives you an idea of, of what we might be thinking of. And so basically what we want to do here is we have length frequency data and we wanted to create fisheries for our stock assessment. And fisheries, we tend to um, assume that they have constant selectivity and, and all the areas represented by that fishery have the same selectivity. So what we want to do is we want to run a regression tree and we want to predict the link frequencies and then group these by latitude, longitude and season into groups where there's fairly consistent link frequency. So we assume that the selectivity is, is constant. And so here is the resulting output from that uh, regression tree with splits based on uh, latitude and uh, quarters for the seasons. And so here, if you wanted to determine where each of these were in a fishery, you would just follow down this decision tree and it would tell you uh, which fishery you would be in. So how can we apply this to create an, a set of rules um, for determining how to uh, fix the diagnostics in our stock assessment? Well, there's quite a few issues we have here uh, for doing this in stock assessment. First of all, we don't observe the desired management quantities. So we're not actually trying to uh, predict um, something that we're going to use. There's also uh, a limited number of observations because each assessment would be an observation and we don't have many assessments. So what we need to do is we need to somehow create these observations. And the only way we can really do it is through simulation analysis. And so this is, is uh, the concept in um, creating um, this diagnostic algorithm uh, by using simulation analysis. And first of all, what we want to do is we want to somehow collate all the available assessments, for example, all those created in stock synthesis that have been accepted by independent review. So we, we consider them somewhat reasonable assessments. Um, and this is something that we've done in the past on a limited scale for, for doing simulation analyses. Um, then we want to use these uh, stock assessments for both the operating model and the estimation model. And that means that we, um, we know when the model is, is correctly specified and we also know uh, what 
specifications we've put into the, the simulation or the estimation. So just like in any other simulation, we want to run the operating models. We want to have random observation error and some kind of process variability in there as well. Then we want to run the correctly specified estimation model. So we can use this to determine uh, whether or not uh, a model uh, will pass or fail um, a, uh, a diagnostic. For example, you could say that if um, the particular run was outside the 2.5 or the 97.5 percentiles um, based on correctly specified models, then there's a high probability that that model is uh, misspecified. Then we also want to run misspecified models. And these misspecified models could be parameters fixed at the incorrect value, could have different model structure like the Bevan and Holt versus uh, Ricker stock recruitment models or asymptotic versus dome shape uh, selectivity. Um, unmodeled process variation, or it could be a combination of those because in the real situation, there might be multiple misspecifications occurring at the same time. Then we want to analyze this data using some kind of machine learning algorithms like regression trees or the derivatives to create the rules. And so these rules would then be based on the magnitude of the diagnostics and a combination of which diagnostics have been um, violated and and then that might be able to tell us how we can um, change the model to uh, resolve the issues with the diagnostics so as far as the next steps go um, we want to collate assessments and create a database uh, we want to identify the appropriate diagnostics and metrics um, we're actually having a workshop coming up this year that i'm supposed to be organizing for the risk analysis that we're doing, but um, because it's based on diagnostics, it can be used to uh, improve information here about uh, which diagnostics to use and what metrics to use. Then we need to run some simulation and diagnostic analyses. And uh, Felipe and Henning are already planning to do this uh, for a paper for the CAPM workshop uh, next year. And then when that, once that's all done, we need to be able to automate this diagnostic system so we can include it in the uh, assessment models. So the final component is a procedure to weight and combine models. Um, so weighting models, basically you'd uh, want all your models to pass the diagnostics. So essentially if, if it fails, you're giving it zero weight. Um, data weighting is an issue um, in, in weighting models, but hopefully we can fix that. Um, and if, if we do, then we, uh, well, uh, if we, we, if we try and use AIC, um, we end up, we might choose uh, too few models, uh, similar to what uh, Liz Brooks showed uh, in last month's uh, presentation. Um, and part of this might be because of the data weighting issues and uh, model specification. Um, as an alternative, we could use something like pre prediction skill, which uh, Laurie has just uh, published a paper on. Um, we also want to take into consideration the parameter uncertainty. Uh, what we did in our risk analysis, we used uh, normal approximations based on the estimate and its standard deviation. And this tends to work well if the, the data is very informative, um, but often the probability distributions may be asymmetrical. So an alternative to this is to use MCMC uh, Bayesian analysis. But this is computationally intensive and uh, also requires priors on the model parameters. Um, just to highlight some of the issues here, um, this is something we put together, uh, Juan Valero put together for our risk analysis. And um, the thin line here is the, uh, the normal approximation and the bars are the Bayesian posterior. And so they look fairly similar, you know, the, the modes in about the same place. Um, and this is for this current spawning biomass as a fraction of the unexploited uh, spawning biomass. But the problem comes when you're looking at tails, for example, uh, like limit reference points here. And you can see that there's a 6% probability that we've exceeded the limit reference point for the normal approximation, but it's a 15% probability for the Bayesian analysis, which actually can make uh, quite a difference when uh, interpreting this in terms of management. So alternative uh, could be using uh, prediction skill. 
Um, there's a few issues here that need to be uh, resolved. Uh, first of all, uh, the desired predictions are not observed, for example, the management quantities themselves. Um, so therefore, we must assume that if we can predict the observations, we can also predict the management quantities well. Um, or we might need to tailor the management objectives uh, to the observations, for example, like basing management on catch or changes in the index. Um, another issue is there's often multiple types of observations like catch, index, uh, composition data, tag data. Uh, in Laurie's paper, he found that the age structure production model of recruitment devs was better at predicting the index than the integrated model, which included the length composition data, which intuitively makes some sense because you're, you're fitting to less data. Um, however, you have to ask yourself, is it important to actually fit just the index or should we be somehow fitting to the composition data as well? So we need to, to consider what observations we're predicting. Um, we also need to turn those prediction skills into weights. So if thinking about uh, in terms of probabilities. Um, we also have to think about how to deal with parameter uncertainty. I mean, we're gonna run each of the models with a fixed parameter value and then work out the prediction score on that parameter value. There's quite a few other issues in terms of uh, weighting the models. I mean, uh, including a whole lot of models that are essentially the same, like overweight that outcome, uh, using a whole lot of models with a particular outcome uh, might will uh, influence the results. Um, how are we going to include models that represent the inclusion of different data sets? A particular data set may not be representative of the whole population and so therefore may not be useful or cause bias. I already talked about estimating uh, parameters versus fixing them. Um, there's also uh, often inherent bias where the operating model and the estimation model are exactly the same. So there's no model specification, but you still get bias. Uh, steepness is, is one of the parameters we've seen that occur. So what are the next steps? Um, we need to solve the data weighting problem. Uh, Jim's giving a uh, going to give a presentation at next year's CAP and workshop on this. Hopefully, he'll solve all the problems for us. Um, we also need some research to determine the best approach for model uh, weighting. Uh, we need to ensure the assessment models output all the desired quantities, for example, standard areas of management quantities if we're using the normal approximation. If we're going to use the prediction skill, we need that to be automated so it can be used with the uh, general model. And finally, we need to develop the software to weight and combine all the, the different models. There's also a few other issues that I haven't mentioned that are worth considering. Um, and this one here comes out of the Big Eye Tuna uh, example that I started with, where we had different models. We had one model, which was a total catch history model, and then we had, well, well not total catch history model, but a longer term model. And then we had another model that was a shorter model. We could also have a total catch history model. So you have to decide when you start your model and what the initial conditions are. Um, I also didn't talk about forecasts. Lots of management advice is based on forecasts and there's other assumptions uh, that are required in those forecasts and uncertainty that needs to be included in the forecast. Um, I think finally, um, management strategy evaluation is um, something that's really trendy and, and a lot of people are using it. So how does this fit into that? Um, it's These en ensemble models are quite uh, computationally intensive, so um, it may not be appropriate to use these as the uh, assessment model uh, in the MSE evaluation. However, they're quite well suited to come up with the operating model for use in the evaluations. So in summary, um, the research for the good practices guide has been conducted. Um, we have to, or well, somebody has to write the guide. Um, we also have to develop the next gen assessment model, which has already been st started. Um, there's plans to develop a diagnostic al algorithm, um, a procedure to weight and combine uh, models needs to be developed. We also need to develop a database of stock synthesis applications so that it can be used in the, the um, diagnostic uh, expert system component. And finally, all of this has to be automated so that we have a, a, a nice um, 
comprehensive uh, system or expert system that can uh, basically take information and some uh, certain controls and um, go through and do the assessment and produce an ensemble of models. And that's all I have and uh, I'll take any questions if there is any. Wonderful, thank you so much for your presentation, Mark. Um, so audience, we have a nice chunk of time here for your questions, about 20 minutes. Um, please type them in the questions chat box and I'll read them to our speaker. While we wait for those questions, I just wanted to let you know that Mark has shared his slides with us. So if you're interested in them, please feel free to download them from the handouts menu in the GoToWebinar control panel. And one other th um, thing is I want to remind you that and encourage you to share the recording of this webinar with interested colleagues. Um, I'll have it uploaded to the NOAA Central Library YouTube channel in just a few hours after we end this presentation. So I believe there was one question so far. Let me go ahead and open that and, and take a look at that. This first question asks, for your diagnostic algorithm, there often seems to be inconsistent decisions on acceptable between independent peer reviewers. Seems you could arrive at different rules depending on which assessments are included in this process for machine learning. Could you control for reviewers or compare the resulting rules by subsampling from the set of acceptable assessments? Yeah, so um, kind of a complex question. Um, the, the expert system would be based on um, taking default uh, assumptions from these good practices guide. And then the diagnostics would be rules to how to change those and um, uh, produce the final models. So therefore, those would all be fixed in advance. So it wouldn't be uh, something that um, would be um, subjective based on the reviewer or the assessment author's um, decisions. So the, the question would be, how was the best practices guide developed and how was the uh, expert system component for the diagnostics developed and, and what went into creating those? And obviously, depending on who created those, we would get different um, results. Um, so that's why we're trying to get a wide input into developing those things. And also um, by creating the simulation analysis, for the diagnostics, we're no longer making it subjective. We're actually basing it on, um, you know, simulation results. Obviously, it'll be subjective on what uh, goes into those simulations to create those rules. Uh, but one would hope that at least it's less subjective than just what we did for the uh, risk analysis uh, for Big Eye Tuna. And that's a part of the reason that I, I I'm doing this, and it's also part of the reason for having the uh, workshop um, on the risk analysis and the diagnostics. And that's because when we did it, we had basically five or so stock assessment authors and each of us just subjectively scored the results of the diagnostics. And probably the two most experienced stock assessment people often had completely different um, scoring for a particular diagnostic. Um, so there's a lot of subjectivity and that's why we're trying to do this is trying to overcome some of that subjectivity by looking more broader in terms of the information and coming up with a more objective uh, rules-based method to, to develop these models. Thank you for your response, Mark. Uh, another question asks, in the course of my career, I have seen best practices evolve quite a bit. Would this expert system be able to evolve over time? Um, I, I didn't really consider that. Obviously, you could rerun the simulations and create uh, a new um, set of rules based just on simulations. Um, but I have a feeling that the the person asking the question might say is if we got results from applying this to real populations and then seeing if it worked or not, we could somehow update the rules based on that. Um, result and I guess it's possible I haven't really thought about it but 
there may be a way of doing it. I mean, that's obviously what what happens in the real world with business applications and things like that, where they've got really good data and the data is observing what they're trying to predict. And so they can do that sort of thing. However, unfortunately in stock assessment, we don't have as much data and, and we're not really often observing what we want to predict. Excellent. Well, I'm wait there, there don't appear any, to be any more questions. It can, um, while we wait to see if the, any more come through, um, did you or Kristen have any last comments? Um, one thing that I, I would like to mention, so throughout the talk, I was talking about the models must pass all the diagnostics. And that's a, that's a question that we've got to think about is, is not, if a model doesn't pass the diagnostics, should it, all, or should it still be considered in the ensemble? Um, and given some weight, or should the models um, pass every single diagnostics before they could be included? Obviously, in our risk analysis, because none of the models really did that perfectly, um, most of the models failed at some diagnostics, and we use those diagnostics as the weighting for the models in the ensemble. So that kind of goes completely opposite to what um, I was mentioning here in the presentation. Excellent. Um, well, that looks like we have no more questions, so I'm going to go ahead and conclude our presentation. Um, thank you so much, Mark, for, for coming to our seminar platform today. And, and Kristen, thank you for organizing the National Stock Assessment Science Seminar, as always. Okay, thanks for having me. Absolutely. And audience, I'm so glad that you joined us for today's library seminar. NOAA Central Library is proud to present the work of the NOAA community and its partners. And we hope you'll join us again for National Stock Assessment Science Seminar, uh, hosted on the first Thursday of the month at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can go to library.seminars.noaa.gov to register. So enjoy the rest of your day, everybody. Take care. <laughs>